In art, there are three primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. You guys know colors, right? We got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, blue again, this weird thing called indigo, which is just the third blue, and the other one that's named after a blue flower. Okay, got it? No. Good. Now, imagine if these colors were placed brilliantly into a chart, so you could tell which ones mix well together, which ones clash with each other, and which ones you need to mix to get other ones. Do you have it in your mind? Good, because whatever it is, it's probably better than this thing. Now, now, before we get ahead of ourselves, I'm not saying that the color wheel is a bad diagram of the colors. It works really well, but only under some certain conditions. But people completely ignored these conditions, and now we just use this for everything. Also, it's all Isaac Newton's fault, but we'll get to that later. Before I talk about that, I need to provide your brains with the juice of knowledge that is... What is color? Yeah, what he said. If you want color, you need light first. And if you don't want color, then why the heck did you click on this video? The title talks about color. What did you expect? You ever see those images with a triangle and a light coming in from one side and a rainbow out the other? Or when you spray a hose and you see a rainbow? That's the same process that converts white light into color. In fact, white light is just all the colors really close to each other. So how color works is that certain things absorb some colors and reflect others. The colors they reflect land in our eyes, making us see the thing as that color. Things that reflect all the light, like paper, appear white, and things that absorb all of it are black, like a black hole. Any object's color is defined by how much of each type of light it reflects. Okay, now that you know that, we can go back to talking about Newton. As said here, Isaac Newton was the first to arrange colors into a wheel. The illustration appeared first in his 1704 book, Optics. During his famed prism experiments, Newton discovered that by refracting sunlight onto a wall, white light was made of seven visible colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. He then organized the seven hues into a wheel in the order that they appeared. Now, this color wheel is okay. There are some mistakes with it, but that's all right. The only problem is how it evolved. Look, if you go on Google and you search color wheel, you'll find that most of these images are wrong. Okay, but why do you keep saying all of those are wrong? They look fine to me. That's what you think, huh? Well, I'll show you what the color wheel is supposed to look like. To start, we have three primary colors. Red, blue, and yellow green. These colors are called the additive primary colors because they make more colors by adding light. An example of adding light would be, say, mixing different colored spotlights. Red and blue make magenta, blue and green make cyan, and red and green make yellow. From there, you can make more colors by combining those again and again. This is called RGB and is used by most online drawing tools, those hex code thingies, and even our eyes. Next, we have the subtractive primaries. These are cyan, yellow, and magenta. As you can tell, they're just the secondary colors from the additive ones. These work by subtracting light, and an example of this would be highlighters or markers. Subtractive primaries are sometimes used in combination with black, which is why people call it CMYK. The K is for black because B is for blue. CMYK is known for being used in printers. Now that we know that, here's everything the normal color wheel gets wrong. This is my rendition of it. You can already see how it's really unbalanced. Look at the jump from red to red orange compared to the jump from cyan to blue or yellow to green. This is because the red blue yellow color wheel tries to go with the idea of warm and cool colors when there are too many cool and not enough warm. So they stretch out the red to yellow range across a third of the wheel when it's actually supposed to take up about a sixth. Also, the wheel has purple as a secondary color when red and blue make magenta instead. This was probably because magenta dye was really rare back then, but they had loads of red and blue. I guess mixing those two made it look more like a purple because of the type of dye used. Now, I know I said this was bad, but it does have some good uses. The red-blue-yellow wheel is mostly for things like painting, and when you're painting an autumn landscape, you're gonna need those reds and oranges. And I can't remember the last time I walked outside and saw some magenta or cyan trees. But art is not confined to just drawing nature. With the rise of modern art, every color gets to play. So let's improve this wheel. 
There, now we have red, blue, and green standing out as the primaries. The only really prominent color is green, which has three slots, but according to game theory, we see the most shades of green than any other color, so I'm going to let it slide. Now, you might say that blue also has three slots, but here's where I say that cyan is not a shade of blue, and magenta is not a shade of purple. Speaking of cyan and magenta, you will see that the subtractive colors stand out the most here. And that's because, well, they do. If you take a look at this spectrum, you can easily spot cyan, magenta, and yellow. So that's that about color. Recently though, the whole variety of color is being used again thanks to people on the internet. So I guess that's all for this video. This whole idea started out when I thought about where ultraviolet and infrared would be on the color wheel, and how reddish magenta exists if they're on the opposite sides of the entire visible light thingy. There were a lot more things I wanted to cover on the video, but it was getting too long. So maybe I'll make another video on this. Until next time.